and welcome to my channel my sister says my name is Desiree and today I'm going to be sharing a video with you about miscarriage I learned a lot from my recent miscarriage and I hope that the information I share today can help you or someone you love that's going through a miscarriage has gone through one or maybe you just are curious about what they entail or are worried about your own but I hope I can help you out today Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what a miscarriage is and then I'm going to be sharing my story with you about what my whole process was of what I went through and then I'm also going to talk about how to know if you're having a miscarriage, what some of the causes for miscarriage are, how they take care of it and help you along that process, how to help with the grief, how to handle the loss of a miscarriage and then I'm also going to talk about um, getting pregnant again after having a miscarriage. So I hope this video will help you out and I'm excited to share what I have to say with you. I was shocked to learn that one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. Now some of these pregnancies might be pregnancies that the woman didn't even know about and maybe she just has regular periods and just didn't have her period for a while and then just had a heavy period and it was actually a miscarriage but she didn't know. But still, one in four is a lot, and there's probably women in your life that, do, that have had miscarriages that you don't even know about. And I think people have a hard time talking about it because it is hard, it's a loss, and I think one of the reasons that people don't talk about it is because they feel like it's their fault. And I just wanted to say, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself for it, and just move on with hope and I hope that maybe hearing my story will help you out or if you are pregnant and you're worried about a miscarriage that this will bring you some comfort and some answers as well so I'll share my story now I miscarried actually really recently I miscarried just a couple of weeks ago um, and I wasn't very far along but no matter how far along you are when you miscarry it's still really hard obviously it's I feel like it's even harder the further along you are, but even if you've only been pregnant for two weeks, you still think about your due date and, oh, I'll have my baby around this time of year and I'll be this pregnant at Christmas and I want to name my baby this and if it's a boy and this, if it's a girl, and you, you think about this and you plan it and you plan telling your family and it's hard. It's hard to have all these hopes and dreams and excitement and then have it be gone. But I know that it's gonna be okay, and I'm grateful for all the, the support I've received from my family throughout it. Um, I actually have a little girl who just turned 11 months old, and so the babies were gonna be 18 months apart, which is really close, but that's we felt like we should get pregnant again, so we did and um, I was breastfeeding and so I actually never had a period between Eden and the next baby and so I didn't know how far along I was but we were guessing at the time I miscarried I was probably about seven weeks along and so but I had an ultrasound scheduled and a doctor's appointment so that they could kind of estimate how far along I was and I was getting ready for my first doctor's appointment on a Monday afternoon and I went to the bathroom before I was about to leave and I realized that I had some bleeding. Now just so you know, bleeding during the first trimester is technically normal. You can have implantation bleeding and you can have bits of bleeding for other reasons and it was just a bit of spotting so we weren't super worried about it. Um, but of course in the back of my mind I was thinking I think I'm having a miscarriage, but I don't want to freak out yet. Let's just wait and see. So I went to my doctor's appointment and it got me even more excited talking about different things and um, going over my health and my history and my husband was there with me. And the doctor said, you know, don't worry, you might not be miscarrying at all. So don't freak out. But if it gets worse, let me know. And then throughout the day, it kept getting worse and worse. And I started getting a lot of cramping and um, and I felt, and I knew it was a miscarriage. So I had actually an ultrasound scheduled for two days later and I was able to move it up to the next day. I continued to bleed and bleed and then I had an ultrasound um, the next afternoon 
that confirmed that um, that I'd lost the baby and there was only a little bit of remnants left. Um, and so that was actually a blessing for me. I miscarried really fast. Um, I actually only bled for one week, which is a blessing too. Um, my body was able to go through it quickly, um, but it was still it was still really hard. And um, we spent uh, right after the ultrasound, we packed up and we went and stayed with my parents for almost a week to just cope with things and have support and I get our minds off things. And there was a lot of distraction from the miscarriage because the closures of this COVID-19 outbreak were being announced and everyone was freaking out about that. So that was a good distraction, I guess. Um, but it's still hard. But I am hopeful that we will be able to have another baby soon. We got pregnant really easily, which is another blessing in all of this. And I'm so grateful for the little girl that I do have. There's so many women out there that struggle with infertility and try and try and never get to have a baby. And so I'm just so grateful for my baby that I do have and hopefully I will get to have more. So that was a little bit about my story. I wasn't very far along, so it was pretty simple. Um, but I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. Um, like I said, I'm going to talk about what, how to know if you are miscarrying. So some of the ways to know, obviously I mentioned that I was having bleeding and cramping and the bleeding can be normal, but my doctor said if you are feeling like you have to put a pad on because there's a, that much bleeding, you should call me. So if you're pregnant and you're having that much bleeding, definitely call your doctor and see what they want you to do, depending on how far along you are or, or maybe other conditions that you have might put you more at risk. So definitely call your doctor if you're having any more than spotting. Um, you can call them if you're having spotting too. Doctors love to be there for you. Um, some other signs that you're miscarrying, like I said, is back pain and cramps, basically all the feelings that you have when you're in labor. Um, those are also signs of miscarriage. And then you would wanna do an ultrasound to confirm that you're miscarrying. They almost always have you do that um, just to see kind of where the bleeding's coming from, if you've passed the fetus, if you haven't, all of that stuff. And then you will want to also follow up with your doctor and just make sure that everything is good. So the treatment for miscarriage, I didn't really know how to, how to call this, but like the process that they do for you when you're having a miscarriage depends on how far along you are when you miscarry and also how your body is handling it. So sometimes when your body realizes that this baby isn't going to grow or that something is wrong, your body will just hold on to the fetus and it won't abort it. And so maybe you go in for an ultrasound and you're nine weeks along, but the fetus is only six weeks along and your body has just been holding on to it like nothing's happening, but the baby still needs to come out. And so in those situations, or if you're having um, maybe too much bleeding, they might do a DNC. And all that is that you they can put you out for it, like put you under, under anesthesia. Um, and then they just go in and kind of, it's an aspiration procedure, which means they just kind of suck out the, the fetus and the placenta or whatever is going on in there, depending on how far along you are, and help get everything out. And the importance of this is if your body is holding on to anything, it'll continue to bleed to try and get it out and you could hemorrhage and it can cause other problems. So that's why you definitely wanna be working with your doctor through all of this, just to make sure that everything's okay. And depending on how far along you are, you might have to actually labor and um, deliver the baby in the hospital. But if you're earlier on, like I was, I didn't have to do a DNC at all and I just um, miscarried at home, which I feel like is the most common um, situation, but a DNC is definitely a possibility, but it's nothing to be afraid of. It d helps you to be safe and it helps take care of everything. Another thing it, that you can do to help with the pain as you're going through everything, obviously during pregnancy you can't take any ibuprofen or narcotics or anything like that, um, but you could definitely take ibuprofen um, while you're miscarrying because it's not at risk for your baby anymore. I did that and it really helped with the cramps and the back pain and stuff. 
and just help me through all of that. So the bleeding for me was a lot like just a heavy period. It wasn't anything crazy. And like I said, if you're bleeding like a lot, they usually say if you're soaking through a pad more than once every two hours, I think the rule is, don't call me on that, um, then you want to go into the emergency room probably because you do not want to hemorrhage and lose too much blood. Um, but for as far as the timeline goes, my doctor said that I shouldn't be bleeding longer than two weeks. Um, so if you are bleeding for a long time, I had a friend that bled for six weeks after a miscarriage, which means something was going on and she should have probably gone to the doctor. But if you're bleeding for longer than two weeks, call into your doctor and make sure that everything is okay. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is what causes a miscarriage. And I talked about this a little bit already, but causes for a miscarriage are usually just a genetic chromosomal problem that's going on, that your body wasn't able to form the baby, that things weren't just lining up. Birth is truly a miracle in life and we shouldn't be surprised that sometimes it just doesn't always work out and it's not your fault and that's okay. And especially if you're really early on in when you miscarry, that's usually the problem is that it just it just didn't work out. Um, some of the other causes could be if you're using drugs or alcohol or tobacco while you're pregnant or even taking ibuprofen early on in pregnancy can cause miscarriage. So definitely you want to be taking care of your body and not taking in anything that could harm you or the baby. Another thing that can cause a miscarriage is being too underweight or overweight. Obviously, I'm not gonna say like a boundary on that, but work, work with your doctor um, to see if maybe that is a problem. Your body can only create a baby if it feels like it's capable of doing that. So if you're too underweight and you're not eating enough, or if you're overweight and it's causing other health problems, that could also cause difficulty with staying pregnant and having a baby. And the last cause for pregnancy could just be that you're, like I said, your health isn't doing well. Maybe you have some type of problem or disease that makes you more high risk that could be hard to stay pregnant. But the nice thing is we have wonderful doctors who live in the 21st century that can totally help you overcome those risks of things that might be make it harder for you to keep a baby. And usually if you have just one miscarriage, that's considered like normal just because of the chromosome alignment and all of that stuff. It statistically is just kind of normal to happen. But if you've had more than two miscarriages, they usually deem that as recurrent miscarriages and they can do an entire workup that helps um, figure out what is causing this problem and help you along with that process. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is how to process this, how to live through this grief and go through it and overcome it. One thing that I think really helped me um, in my process of going through all of this was to tell those that I loved what I was going through. Like I said earlier, a lot of times there's a lot of fear and this weird stigma around miscarriages that people don't talk about it, but I think just like any death, I would share with those that I love what happened and what was hard for me and what help I need. Sometimes it's really hard to share that, um, but I, I shared it with my family, of course, and also some other friends and people that I um, am involved with doing things at church. I told them what was going on and everyone was so understanding and loving. And I think you'd be surprised how many of the people that you tell have had a miscarriage themselves, or someone really close to them has had a miscarriage and can be really understanding and loving. And it really helped me to talk about it. And if you don't feel comfortable talking about it with family or friends, you can always seek professional help and talk to a therapist. They are a wonderful resource and can help so much. I feel like everyone should see a therapist. We all need it and it's nothing to be ashamed of. I think another important thing to remember as you are grieving is to think about your spouse or your partner through all of this, about how they're feeling. And a lot of the times we mostly just think about the mother um, who has had the miscarriage and, and obviously you physically are carrying that baby and there's hormones and it, it's really hard. 
but your spouse also is a huge part of it. It's their baby too. And I think it was important for me to remember that my husband was also grieving. It was his baby and he was sad and to talk about it openly with him. And you know, men, at least <laughs> most men, they grieve differently and they process things a little bit differently than maybe I would where I was crying and I was very outward about how I was feeling. He was very quiet and didn't really talk about it too much, but it was really good for us to be able to talk about it with each other and come closer together through this experience. Another thing that helped me so much is to turn to God. I am a religious person. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I think that was some a huge part of my process of healing was to turn to God and to those in my church to help me out with this. And if you are a religious person, um, I would definitely remember that. And if you're not, or if you're seeking someone that can help you through this, um, our church has missionaries all around the world and people and churches all around the world that would love to help you even just to give you some support through this time. So I'll just put a link um, to that resource online where you can find someone to talk to that, that loves you and loves the Lord that could, could help you out. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is knowing when to get pregnant again. Now obviously the actual choice of when to get pregnant again is completely between you and your spouse, but I wanted to talk about the medical part about what the recommendations are for that. Now this is what my doctor said. You're definitely gonna wanna talk to your doctor about their recommendation. Um, but my doctor said, first of all, no tampons or intercourse or baths or anything for the first two weeks while you're bleeding and all of your body's healing and all that's going on. And that is because you have to actually dilate your cervix a little bit for all of that blood and the fetus and everything to come out. And so um, you just don't wanna have any risk of an infection. So that's why you have to stay away from all of that. But she said, after two weeks, you're good to go. So technically you could get pregnant if you really want to right after that, cause you will ovulate before you have your first period. But my doctor recommended waiting until after your first period, just so that you can have an estimated due date to keep things easier that way. And it just give your body a little bit more time um, to heal and be ready to get pregnant again. And obviously if you need to wait a year before having another baby, that's totally up to you. And I don't think we should ever even ask people when they're having another baby, why they're not having a baby, because you never know what someone is going through, if they've had a miscarriage, if they're dealing with infertility, if other things are going on. And that is something that is completely private and that I don't think should ever be talked about. I just hope that we can always just support others, support the women and family, families and people around us with love because we never know what they're going through or the love and support that they need. I hope this video was helpful to someone and maybe answered some questions. And I know at least for me, it felt nice to be able to just talk about everything that I've been thinking about and researching and, and going through myself. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you wanna share your experience with me of your miscarriage. I would love to hear it and love to support you. I will see you next time.